everyone. Hey, and guys. Happy Saturday. Yes. Can Day you believe seven it? of our prayer and fasting <laughs> week. It's been so, so good. We made it. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. You, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of looking forward to another kind of countdown. And uh, I know it should be for tomorrow, which is uh, Sunday morning yes. service. I am looking forward to that too. But there is a championship game coming up. I'm just saying. I, that I is can't... not a spiritual thing. Oh, I know, but it is. How can bring that up right now? I can't uh, talk anything about Alabama yeah, football. Right. It is a little bit spiritual. Anyway, uh, some of you have been fasting and praying for the game. Anyway, uh, you know, when, when we're in preparation for a Sunday morning service, one of the things that we uh, often will do, Michelle and I, is, uh, you know, we'll just pray to God to ask him to give us the words to say to you and to those watching online for the, the day, for the week. And, and I would say the Lord's given us a pretty significant word for tomorrow as we close out this series in thriving through the process. And I just wanna challenge you to make yourself available. Come out to, uh, if, you're, if you're physically capable, make yourself uh, available to hearing that word and to coming out and being a part tomorrow at 10 o'clock. But, uh, but hey, before we go too far, as we're kind of closing out this time of fasting and prayer, we're so proud of you. Yes. You made it. Yes. And uh, thank you for doing I, that. And I am looking forward to hearing testimonies yes. from this week. I mean, we have been praying for um, our lost loved ones and yeah. co-workers. We have been praying for revival. We have been praying for change in us. And I am just expectant yeah. to see these um, prayers answered. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think that the prayer must be answered in the exact way in which we've prayed it. And, and that's not really the case. Oftentimes the Lord will answer outside of our timeline or outside of our planning. And yet he answers in a way that's so profound and far uh, more significant than we had ever prayed to begin with. The Bible talks about praying amiss. Uh, you know, I, I jokingly say that because it's a King James Version, but uh, it's kind of like a, a baseball player that is standing in the batter's box and it's a swing and a miss. Well, that doesn't mean the batter is out. It just means the batter's got a couple more shots at it. And I would say that's the same way with our prayer life. That if you didn't get the answer yet to that prayer, don't stop praying. Don't stop believing, but consider that you want to continually align your heart with what God's will is for you. And that's really the scripture we've been right. using uh, as our focus point of in prayer. First, in First John, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, right. which means give him our prayer needs. Yep. Go to him before the throne. Let him know our needs. Not that he doesn't already know them. Right. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything in his will, he answers us. Yeah. He you know, answers. That will of the Lord is something that Jesus submitted to when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, preparing to go to the cross. And Father was asking him to do some pretty outrageous things to give himself as a living sacrifice for our salvation. Right. And he prayed that prayer. God, if Father, if this cup could pass from me, let it be so. And then he changes the narrative. And I think all of us in, in uh, Christianity need to close every prayer like this. Not my will, but your will yes. be accomplished. Yes. Well, before we get into this prayer point tonight, I just want to remind you one last time uh, that we'll continue this Bible reading guide. And you can pick this up tomorrow at, the, uh, at our service. If you've not found a place of um, consistent Bible reading and prayer, that's a great guide for you. The virtual uh, biblical guide, and I say virtual meaning uh, that, that you may online pick up things that we say, but this is a physical copy of virtues you can pray over your kids or your grandkids, scriptures that you can pray over them, promises you can pray. Uh, also praying for the lost. We're not going to stop using this type of format. Right. We're going to continue to pray yeah. and believe God that if your wayward child or maybe grandchild has not yet returned home to the things of Christ, 
that we're going to believe in 2021 it's going to happen. Yes. And then finally, last but not least, you may be at the end of this time of fasting, but this Miracle Results of Fasting book is still available, and I encourage you to read it, reread it, and live what I would call a fasting lifestyle. Just because we're doing this corporate fast for the first seven days of this week doesn't mean that it's over right. on day seven. That's right. You need to continually live a fasted lifestyle, and the book talks about the significance of that. Well, listen, we're about ready to launch back into this prayer point, and I'm so excited tonight that Pastor Hayden's going to lead us in that. Pastor Hayden's going to lead us in our prayer point tonight, which is from doubt to faith. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been walking with the Lord for a while. Yeah. Not my whole life, yeah. but about 30 something years. <laughs> But Don't tell on yourself. I can tell you, yes, my faith is strong, but there are times when I am waiting on an answer from God, yeah. or I'm waiting for Him to move in a certain way how I think He should move. Yeah. And I battle with doubt. Yeah. I battle with doubt. And you know, I've learned over the years, although you're, you may be battling with it and you've seen him move in the past and you know he is faithful, he yeah. is who he says he is and we can trust him. Why in our human minds do we have, oh, well, maybe he's not going to this time. Right. Because doubt tries to show up. <laughs> yeah. And when I've learned that while it is important to wait on the Lord, What's more important is how we wait on the Lord. Come on. That's so good. if we try to move ahead of him, yep. or if we try to do it our way, mm -hmm. or we allow seeds of doubt to come in and build a nest in our head, yeah. the enemy's had his way. Yeah. But anytime that I'm waiting on the Lord and after I fight through the discouragement or fight through my fleshly um argument in my own mind of why God needs to be doing it on my timeline. Right. You know, I always remember the scriptures and, and, and that talks about, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. Because the word tells us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, which is very tiny, we can say to that mountain, be gone. Yeah. And that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. But anytime we're dealing with doubt, Say, Lord, I'm going to trust you, even if you don't feel like you're trusting him, that you're like nervous about it or anxious. Speak it out loud and say, hey, God, I trust you, but teach me during this waiting period to trust you even deeper. You know, when we have delays, often we presume that means a denial. Right. That somehow, some way, that when we prayed and we didn't get the answer that we thought we should have gotten when we should have gotten it, we often see that delay as a denial, and that's not the case. It's not necessarily that God's saying no. God may just simply be saying wait, but often in the delay, doubt is born. And so I want to encourage you to continue to believe, to trust God, to seek God, and, and to know that the Lord is listening. And tonight, Pastor Hayden's going to lead us in a devotional that's going to help open our eyes and help us to better understand the things of God, to recognize that we don't have to live in doubt. We can truly live by faith. Yes. And tonight, I'm so excited about what God's going to do in your spirit about renewing that, that vision to be able to say, God, I'm listening for your heart, and Lord, I want your will. Teach me to go from doubt to faith. Yes. Well, hello, everybody. I hope you've had a great Saturday so far. Um, we are all excited about getting together tomorrow for service and worshiping with you. And also, I'm looking forward to the word that Pastor Mark is going to bring. We've had a great series of thriving through the process. And I know that it's just going to be another great, powerful message. Um, so looking forward to that. But tonight um, we want to wrap up our time of our week of uh, prayer and fasting um, with the transition from doubt to faith. So we all pretty much know what doubt is. I think that is a relatively easy word for us to relate to, um, which is not so great, a doubt when it comes to faith and our relationship with God. But 
Um, I know that we've probably all struggled with doubt at different points in our lives. You know, when things don't go as we thought they would or thought that they should, or we believed one thing was going to happen and then something completely different happened, um, you know, and everything ended up going a different way. Or like Pastor Michelle just said, um, that waiting time. Um, where sometimes in that waiting we'll try and cut corners or do it our own way. And that's really when doubt in who God is and doubt in His character try really hard to creep in and make room in our hearts and minds and in our spirits. We have to know who God is and His history with us and then His history throughout history, history, and build our faith and our trust on that. So I think we really need to kind of understand what faith is. You know, we know doubt and not doubt is is not really trusting who God says he is. And that can be pretty easy to fall into, um, you know, when life is, when we're, when we're in the middle of life. So um, faith can be misunderstood sometimes, and sometimes we can fall into thinking that faith is something that it's really not. A faith is not positive thinking. Faith is not a hunch that you follow. Faith is not hoping for the best or hoping that everything is going to turn out all right. And faith is not just uh, being and thinking optimistically. So what is faith? Um, Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So faith begins with things hoped for, but not only for a desire for something better, but an awareness of something else. So it starts with a sense of discontent. You need to be dissatisfied with the way you are now and long for something better. All throughout the Bible, the enemy of faith is a complacent spirit, an attitude of what I call an attitude of meh, <laughs> an attitude of meh, the mindset of satisfaction with the status quo. I'm fine just the way I am doing things how they are. So when you are dissatisfied and when you're looking for something better, then you are in a perfect position to exercise and grow in your faith. Um, something that Pastor Adam has shared Many times, um, and that I always remember, is the comparison of faith and trust. Um, they, to me, are great interchangeable terms um, when it comes to our relationship with God. Really, your relationship with anyone. We know what it means to trust someone, to trust in someone, to trust that, you know, someone cares for us, someone loves us, someone is who they say they are. We, we are, that's easy for us to say, okay, yeah, I connect with that. I know what, that, I know what you're talking about. Um, faith is really just trusting in God's character and in his attributes, trusting in his goodness, trusting in his love for you, trusting in his plans that he has for you, trusting in his faithfulness, trusting that his promises are true and that he is trustworthy. Um, those promises, like we're told in Deuteronomy, that the Lord goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then the promise found in Jeremiah that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And then one more in Isaiah that says, No weapon formed against you will prosper. Uh, faith is, is a continuation of that trust, even when things don't go like you hoped. He does what he, what he wants, God does, and he does what he knows what is best, and we submit to his will. That is faith, that is trust, that is confidence in him, confidence in who he says he is. And that's really what that will take us from that place of doubt to that place of faith. So let's pray together tonight. Lord, we... Thank you, first of all, for always, always being that faithful father, that faithful God, that trustworthy friend, the one we can always talk to and confide in and be comforted by, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are just continuing to prove yourself to us as a God who 
like you've promised, will never leave or forsake us. A God that has plans and futures and hope for us and that protects us from the things of the world, from from our enemy, the devil as well. God, we just thank you that you are our protector, our father, our trustworthy God. So tonight as we wrap up this week of prayer and fasting and as we have reflected on um, moving from you know, all these different things towards you, closer to you, from apathy to action and, and all the other ones. God, I just pray that you would continue to burn in us a desire to know you more, a desire to be closer to you, God. And I pray that our faith, our trust in you would be strengthened tonight and just continue to build as we go forward um, throughout this year. I just pray um, that you would give us clear vision for this year, um, personal, um, emotional, in our jobs, and our families. God, I just pray that you would give us the strength to move forward with strong, um, a, a strong foundation in our faith and our trust and our relationship with you, God. We thank you for all that you're going to do this year. Thank you for opening our eyes to more of who you are through this week, God. We're believing for great things this year in 2021. The best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Well, we will see you tomorrow morning here online or on campus at 10 a.m. for our services.